but uh, for now, I'm going to start the lecture. So, Git basic uh, concepts. And first, I would like to say you don't have to memorize uh, any of these commands or low level details. This is uh, meant to be uh, about how Git works and uh, in the background and things like this. And there will be a number of commands shown. And uh, the idea is not to memorize everything, but to simply understand the ideas in it. And uh, there will be some things that I would suggest that you do code along to simply to see how it looks inside of the Git um, directories and how it changes when uh, you give various commands. So yesterday, uh, for the basic commands, you saw that uh, there would often be these hash sums that were shown. and. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about those today and how you use those to look at, uh, for instance, earlier commits. And we're going to, you, to look at the, the commit trees a very little bit, but otherwise uh, Diana will continue with that later today. And in general, look at the basic concepts of Git. And it will help you to understand what the commands do that uh, you learned about yesterday. So what is Git? Git is a distributed uh, version control system. And that means it does not rely on a server client model. Instead, everyone has a full copy of the entire project or the repository as we call it. And inside of this repository, there's a complete history, there are various metadata and so on. And you can work on it independently of your coworkers. And uh, the, you can actually have everything just on your own machine. But uh, if you are doing uh, some sort of work together with someone, then it's a good idea to have a server to distribute the changes. And why should you use Git and not some other version control system? Well, it's popular. That means a lot of people are already using it. And since they know how to use it, at least many of them do, they will be able to tell you how to do something. I mean, it's uh, easier to Google info on how to do something in something that is popular than it would be if it was something more esoteric. It relies on hash sums, and that means it has a built-in corruption detection for the data and that's built in security. And it's distributed, which is a good thing when you're working together with someone. And it's also quite fast, simple, and flexible. And another thing that is also good is that it's free and it's open source. So how does Git store history? Well, you remember we created a repository yesterday and uh, we, also initialized it, and we had when we had done that, then Git creates a number of uh, subdirectories, and they are all below this uh, .git directory. And uh, here, I would actually suggest that you open a terminal window, and uh, on your own machine, or Git Bash on your own machine, and then create a repository. And we can call it repository just to make it easy, but you can call it anything. So I'm going to create one that I call repository. And then I'm going to change to this directory. You see, at first glance, it looks like there is nothing. Then we look at the hidden files and there's nothing. So all is well. And then we say git init. And now it created an empty Git repository, just like yesterday. And let's again look at the files. Now there's actually a uh, hidden directory here. And we can try type find. And when we do that, uh, then it will show all these uh, subdirectories. You can see there's Git, 
there's the objects directory there's one for refs there is uh, branches and there's nothing under that right now because there's only this main branch and uh, if you created more branches it would uh, show up under here and there's a head that is uh, where it uh, the hash it would be pointing to and all of these many things here uh, mac as well if it's not there and uh, that will actually it is nicer than find actually the reason i was not using it is that you have to install it <laughs> but uh, yes you can install it on other uh, OSs, so it might actually be better to use tree it actually looks nicer as you can see also it shows the directory structure in a better way so um as we just saw uh, most of these directories they are empty and what files are there is not interesting and here this example here i'm going to also show you what it actually does cat is a linux command that shows the content of a directory the the command on windows is type instead you can see here so this is the content of the file config and i'm just going to check because i think someone has asked a question chat no it was uh, thank you diana And let's look what's inside of head. I just want to show you that you can actually do this yourself. And I think you should because, uh, well, it's nice to see what was created inside of your repository yourself. And as uh, you can see here, there's a file that's called description and that is actually used uh, for some description of your repository if you want to, and you can put something there. Not so much for yourself, but that also can be good if you later have many repository and you want to check which one was what. But otherwise, it can be good for people you're working with. Well, otherwise, you can also just put a readme file there. So um, what if we're adding some content now? I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a file, and I'm going to use nano, I think instead of uh, this command here, echo something in, uh, I don't know the English word for these. Uh, citation marks is maybe the word, okay. Echo these uh, something, and then you throw that to a file. And you can do that, but I'm going to use nano instead. I am going to, file here and uh, I'm going to call it. this file is very interesting and then I'm going to save it with the control X and then I say yes save the modified buffer and then I'm going to say I will create this file that I had asked for and now I have a file here I'm using ls, and I believe ls should work in git bash as well, uh, because it should be installed together with the git. Git bash is actually a uh, stripped down version of a Linux terminal. But if it doesn't, then dir should work, e-i-r, as the first part of directory on Windows. But uh, we have this file, and uh, I think you should then uh, try and add it. Let's do that. And uh, now let's commit it. And in this case, I'm going to use this short form of the git commit, where I add the flag minus M, and then I can write a message. And I'm just going to say, this is the first commit. Like this. 
and now things have ha have happened here. We can try do three, and I'm going to say three. Skit, and you can see there is now like you see here in this little bit nicer overview. There's now a lot of stuff happening here compared to what it was before. Uh, you have things down here under objects, most particularly. You have these hashes here. And there's also now uh, telling you that the head of uh, is the head pointer is now pointing to something because now there's actually something in the repository. Uh, and what is inside of this repository directory, which is uh, part of the working tree, is what we are calling it. And sometimes we call it the workspace. And uh, .git is not actually considered to be included. So the working tree itself, the stuff that you have in your Git repository is only the file, file.txt. And uh, it is just a regular directory. It's just that it has been initialized as a Git repository. So there's nothing strange or fancy about it. And when you then do the git add and git commit commands, git will start to track the file called file.txt. So git stores files and other things, directories, as objects, and objects are stored on the Git objects. Yeah, and it uses content-based addressing. That is, there is a hash sum that is going to be computed from the content of the object, and this hash will uniquely identify the object. So you will only have one hash that looks that way. There will not be more that are the, are the same. Uh, and it, But if you have two things that are actually identical, they will have the same hash. And that is actually the whole idea because you only want to store it once. And you could also compute the hash manually. You can find it with the git hash object. And let's try to do that. And then you are getting this uh, hash here. And you can also see that this uh, hash is different because now it ha it is one that you have uh, have made yourself. And we, let's see three. And uh, it still shows these ones uh, that was created directly. So. And you can find the corresponding object. Now let's see, we have this one. So you can uh, look into it here and you can see the first part of it, the zero 09, that will not actually, uh, it will not be, be shown as uh, part of this here. It will be shown as, um, it will be a directory, the first part that you have here, zero 09. And uh, so you will go into that, and then under that, you find this. And that is the hash, the whole thing here. And you can use that if you are looking for this uh, specific, you can look at for this specific hash when you want to find this object. And you can check and see that something is identical. Let's uh, actually try and show how to do this because uh, we have a file that's called file.txt and I am going to copy it and make an identical copy. Like this. And these two files are identical. We can show that with diff. See? And uh, that also means that they should have uh, the same uh, hash. 
save what it was. And they are indeed identical. Uh, one thing to make, to remember is that you can see this hash here is very long. And if you're actually using it to find this specific commit, then it would be annoying to have to write all of this. But uh, all you need to do is to address it is to make sure you pick enough of it that it is unique. So just pick, picking a little bit of it like this might be dangerous if you have lots in uh, your repository because it would be then likely that there would be two that are the same. But uh, if you take a little bit more, then uh, that should be enough to identify it uh, uniquely. So uh, let's try to do that. And then we will just take, for instance, this part here. And we know it's enough because we have seen here that there are actually only these two. So it was, it's not going to be uh, confusing, but you can see it finds it. This file is very interesting. So let's try and see if there's a difference. If we picked more, the full one, and it does exactly the same. So it was enough to just take this first part of it. And in fact, if it was not enough, if uh, it did not identify it uniquely, Git will complain. And then you will just take more numbers. And uh, it's usually enough with seven to eight. And if you have a very large project with lots of files and directories, you may need to go to 12, but uh, you should not need the full one. And Git will complain, as I said. But it's not uh, the objects, it's not a clear text file. So you can use hex dump on Linux. I don't know if there's a similar command on uh, Mac. Does anyone know this? Um, I'm hoping it's installed together with the uh, Git bash, but otherwise you can find programs that uh, can do this. I mean, you can Google uh, some hex reader or whatever, and you can get something that will do the same as hex dump does. It simply outputs uh, what is in there in a somewhat nicer format. So you cannot access it directly, but you can look at the type and you can see the content by when you're doing this uh, command cat file, then git, this is a git command. Uh, and it looks into it and tells you that this is what it's called a blob. And blobs are, for instance, the objects. And uh, if you then say, I would like to actually print out what's inside of this thing that it points to, minus P is what it's pointing to. So it's a pointer and it's pointing to the file that is called file.txt. And inside uh, you have this file is very interesting. You can see, let's do a cat in the file. So this was the content. And if you then use cat file, you remember cat was uh, the Linux command to output the content of a file. And there is a similar git command, which is called git minus file. And uh, if you use that and then say, I am, would like to know what is inside of the file that is pointed to by this uh, hash here, then you get this file is very interesting. So it's not what is inside of this blob it is what is being pointed at. 
and that is this file, file.txt. And uh, one other thing to remember is that the object itself remains there even if your file is removed. And that is uh, good because that is actually part of that you can go back and restore things in Git. So what if I removed a file like this? Uh, and then I do tree. And I had not added file to, but uh, let's use find to see it here instead. I re tree needed the dot git when it will work. So you can see here, it's still here. It may be removed, but it's still here. And you can still do what you did before. Uh, by using pile uh, arrow up on uh, a terminal, then you can go back through your commands like this. And that is a handy way of uh, finding a previous command and redoing it. And that works at least on Linux. I believe it works on Git bash. I am assuming it also works on Mac. We'll see it's still there. And we can restore it. So the from this uh, object that is a hash, a uh, that is made from this file. You can restore the git. Git will have this, so you can git restore something, and uh, you would like your file the text back because you actually didn't want to delete it. And uh, now it is still it is there again. And uh, let's see, it is the same one as before. And nothing was changed in the tree. It still looks the same. So there are, as you can see under here also, you have this object here that was for the file itself, but what are those other things here? And uh, let's take a look inside of one of them. First, we are looking at this here and to be told what it is. And uh, I can easily copy this, but it's 1A. And then I also take a bit of this. So this is the hash for this object here. And I'm being told that this is a tree. And I'm saying, okay, let us look also what it is the content. And uh, if you go into this, it tells you that there is uh, the tree for this. That is, there is a blob and uh, it is this one. And that is pointing to file.txt. So that actually contains the working tree directory structure. And it, uh, yeah, it stores pointers to files, which it Git language is called blobs when they are, uh, uh, when you look at the hashes and it also points to other trees. And as you could see, it represented the directory structure. And the directory structure is not very interesting right now because it's just a single file. But if you created something more under it, made a subdirectory, then more would be in this. And you could do that. You could simply say uh, sub, yeah. And then go into that. And then I'm going to create a file. I would save that. I'm going back up and I'm going to add sub tier. I'm going to add uh, 
and then I'm going to commit it. And let's now take a look at the tree. And you can now see there is quite a lot more in it because there are now one more file and there is one more. Um, there's one more file, there's one more subdirectory here also. So let's look at what is said inside of this file here. And it still points to this blob here because this was that one. So uh, the tree has one level and it is one blob. But uh, let's look at this again, because there's still this one here. What is that? What is the one we had? In our case, it's called D5. It will not be named as it is in the example because it will get somewhat random names. So you will see that when you are creating it yourself. Let's go up and grab part of this one. Say D5. And this is, tells me is a commit. That is actually containing the commit message that we made. This is the first commit. So that is uh, the commit message you gave when you committed this file.txt will be inside of this uh, commit message that you can find. So, and this is the hash for the commit message. And again, it points uh, to the tree and it has the author, which in this case is me. And uh, it has a committer, which uh, at a time, and the committer could be different because maybe the file was created by someone and then someone else committed it. But uh, usually this would be the same. And I think maybe take a few minutes, five, and let everyone try and see if uh, you can create a directory and uh, go into it, initialize it with Git, and then try and uh, take a look at the subdirectory with the command tree if you have it and otherwise find if you have that just see that you actually get such a tree structure here and you can also try use uh, git cat file minus t on a few of them just to see that uh, that you are getting the same things here so I'm going to just uh, open a small file and then show what commands I wanted you to uh, to do. So do a directory. Go into the repository. Then do git init. Create a file. You don't need to use the same uh, names as I'm doing right now. Uh, but when you have done that, to git add file text, git commit, and then uh, do either tree minus git, tree.git or find depending on what you have or a similar one. Tree is something you may have to install. And um, on if you have a Linux system, then you would need to be able to do a sudo, you would do install tree. But these things up here is um, try this. 
I'll try and do those things here. And uh, let's be back in five minutes. Yeah, now I got a file for commands. <laughs> uh, but let's add everything. With the git add dot, then uh, you will add everything in the directory you are in and also everything below that directory. So that is something you should be careful with if you don't have a git ignore file or something, because you may end up adding stuff that you don't actually want it to add to your repository. This is a horrible commit message, by the way. It will not be useful in any way, but uh, yeah. So you can try adding uh, more files and see if you want to, but uh, I will continue. So you have a commit. And this commit, uh, it will store the state of the project at a given point in time. And that means you can actually go back to a previous commit and uh, ask to have the tree restored as it was at that point. And that means that if you had some uh, errors you had made later, then you can simply roll it all back and be back to a clean directory as it was yesterday for instance and the files you made to, today that were a mistake they will then not be in your working tree but they will of course still reside inside of the git's own history and you will be able to restore it if you find out that you actually wanted to but uh, in this original example where we had just this one file, uh, it would point to this tree that had one level and one blob. And uh, of course, in any repository that you are using, there will be uh, many levels and many blobs because you will have added many directories and files below it. So what more is there in the .git tree? And uh, there is the head, of course, and there is the directory called refs. And those two things are connected, as you will see. And uh, this head is a specific pointer it's a, that always points to the commit that you are currently at, it's called the the tip of the of the of this uh, co no, commits here so i mean it will point to the newest commit if you have not rolled anything back but you could go back to a previous commit and then the head pointer would point to that one and in this case head points to this one here which uh, is the first commit message. You remember this was the commit, the commit and head points to that. And you could see that if you said, and now it will probably not work because I made a lot of uh, changes. But head will probably point to something. It will point to this ref here that is called master because my tree is my branch, the primary branch is default called master in this version of Git. And if you have another version of Git, or if you have set it, it may say main here instead. So that is something to remember. So let's look in this file here, refs, heads, master, and see what that points to. And we have our uh, commit here, which is the newest one. <clears throat> and it is no longer the one uh, that we had here in the example because I added more stuff. 
to it. And you can see it's actually, this is the newest commit message. And we could try see what is inside this. File. SP, you know, grabbing this. And here we say what was in this uh, commit message. And that is, as you can see, the newest one. It is the one where I just added everything I had in the directory and wrote the message adding a bunch of stuff. So it is, as you can see, and we'll, our head pointer is pointing to the commit message, commit that we have made newest. So it's as uh, we want it. So head and master or main are references. And a reference points to the commit and another reference. And head determines the most recent commit, as we just saw here in the example. And there are many of the commands you have in Git that act on this current head. And uh, we'll look a little bit more about that later. And master or main is the current branch. The primary branch is another word that is used for it. And you could also use tags to create references yourself. If say you had something that uh, you wanted to be able to find in a different way. Uh, you could say this commit here we have now is actually something I really want to be able to find. So I will create a tag uh, and name it first, for instance. And when I do that, I will also get the refs to point to tags because now we have some tags instead of just a head. And uh, this tag will point to this message again, to the commit again, the same one uh, as uh, head does right now. But later when you are adding uh, more commits, head will change, but the tag will stay this on this commit. And I see, I will take this part also, and then uh, we will take the break and also do some of the exercises from yesterday. Because I think that will be sort of suitable place to uh, take the break soon. So uh, we have what is called the staging area. And uh, let's look at some of the earlier steps. And we have this file again here, text, and uh, we have this tree here. And this here is the newest commit because we also added the tag. And uh, we could add more to it. Let's take our current file here. Let's take uh, file.txt, open it. You can see we have this one line in it. And now I'm going to add more content to it like this. And I'm going to save it again. And uh, I will just show what is inside the file. It looks like this. This file is very interesting and there's now more content. And I'm going to add it because now I have an updated version. And I'm going to add that. And let's see how it looks in the tree. And uh, yeah, it's difficult to see because then I need to scroll back and forth. But what is happening is that uh, you get a new object. And we did. But... Uh, I shouldn't have created so many here because now I can't find it. But there is one more. I think I'm going to open another. Yes, yeah, it's a 3B, right? It is the one is starting with 3B. Yeah, I think it is. Yes, it is. It's the 3B that is the new one. So this is uh, our new uh, file. Let's see what's inside of it. And it's 3B. Right. Yes, that was the newest one. 
But if you do this, I suggest don't add more files than the file the text and then do changes to that because otherwise it can get difficult to find which one it is that got added. But a new one will get added here, a new object, every single time you do an update to your file. So you would, in this case here, get more and more uh, objects or blobs under this object. And this example just shows the same thing that we just did. And this is also something that I suggest you should try and do. Try to do updates to the file you created. And then again, look at the commit message and see how it changes in the .git tree and how it changes, um, how you can find the commit, me the commit message in it. So uh, the git add command, it creates a blob that corresponds to our update to the file text file, as we just saw. And we have only added it, so there is no other object. And uh, the command also adds a file to the index. And the index is going to be the next commit, but I already did the commit. So, But uh, you can look at it just after you do the add and just after you do the commit. And as uh, we saw before, the index is uh, a binary file. And let's see if we can find it. Uh, it's here. So I am going to try and do cat on it index. And you can see it is indeed a binary file but you can actually recognize some things inside of it, but uh, it's a binary file. And uh, this uh, is what I actually just did. I actually created uh, a commit here before, and uh, we just looked at what was in it here. So this is the same example as uh, on here. It's just that I use different words for it. And uh, this is something you should also try and do, as I just said. So simply do a lot of uh, changes and then see how a new object appears every single time. And uh, we have a tree object that describes the directory structure. And uh, this is uh, what we had. Let's see if we can find the one that fits together with CV. Oh. I am thinking it is possibly this one. I have created too many blobs. I cannot guess which one it is that fits it. So I'm going to try and see. That was actually the one where I created uh, the, the not the newest uh, commit, but the second to newest commit. It's this one. Let's see if it's this one that is the newest. It's the first commit. But you can use this, as you can see, you can go back and forth in it and look at it. And that is uh, nice to see that it actually shows up there. And this was where I wanted to go to. I'm not going to uh, start this part until uh, after the break. So what I... <clears throat> Okay, I hope that uh, everyone uh, got some of the exercises done and uh, got to try and uh, do some uh, commits and other things and see how it worked. So let's continue. And uh, we had, let's see what where we were. 
Yes, uh, we had three objects we have been looking at and that describe the directory structure and a commit that describes the state of the repository. Uh, but there is also a difference which is that the commit has a pointer to a parent if it is no longer the uh, only commit. I mean, so if you have a later commit, it will point back to a parent. And that is uh, the previous commit. And there will be quite many after a while, of course, and you can then go back through these when you want to roll back something or just see what you did earlier. And uh, these commits will be in a tree structure and we call that the commit tree. <laughs> and uh, that will have several commits and each of these commits will have uh, a tree. And that, of course, represents the state of the repository as it was at that uh, point in time. And a commit can have multiple parents because uh, maybe you had several uh, commits before and then you are going to combine those into one. I mean, maybe someone else uh, did the, one of them and you did one of them. And so it points to more than one. And uh, that could be when you had, for instance, several branches. And uh, we are going to look at branches uh, later in the week. And uh, when you have several branches, that is maybe you worked on one branch and your coworker worked on one branch, and uh, then you have agreed that now we are going to, we are happy with what we have done and we are merging it together into one branch. And then uh, the next commit will have uh, commits from more than one. And uh, let's look at head again. Uh, the head and the master. A master, remember, could also be called main. And uh, if you are looking in the git.git .git directory, uh, you remember we found a uh, file called head. And this head pointer, it points uh, to refs heads master or refs heads main. And if you looked in that, then you saw this hash. And then you could uh, check what that pointed to. And that would point to the commit that uh, is the current one that is the head is pointing at. And again, remember, when you do most of the git commands, they will act on the current head that is on the current commit. So you are maybe making uh, new additions and new commits, and that will work on the most recent state of your git repository. And after that, uh, the head will point to the new commit, so it will move forward. And we can change the head to point to somewhere else. And we do that with the command git checkout a specific uh, commit, or uh, the hash of it. And uh, as uh, you remember, we need to only give part of this uh, commit to be able to go back to it. And uh, we could try do that in our example here. And uh, I have made changes. So I'm going to do, I'm going to add my changes first. And then I am going to uh, check my tree like this and uh, let's see where head is pointing as you could see here we're using this command here and uh, if you want to you can try do the same thing but uh, it will always be pointing to refs, heads, master, or refs, heads, main. <clears throat> so 
So you see this here. This is uh, the most recent commit. And we can look and see if we can find it. And we can. It's here. See, C2 and this one here. So let's try and uh, do a check out of an earlier one. We could try go back to, well, let's try to do a git log and see which ones we have. So this is, is uh, the first one. And uh, then we added various things. And this here was the one the head is currently pointing to. And when you do git log, you can also see that this is the head it's sitting, it's pointing here. But what if you wanted to go back instead to before you added these changes here? What if you wanted to go back to this one? Well, in that case, we say git checkout. And then let's try and take that one. And then you are being told you are in the detached head mode. And that just means that it is not currently pointing to the head, to the start of uh, the branch. But let's see what it says with git log. You can see here, it's actually now pointing to this commit, the previous one, adding a bunch of stuff. And we can, uh, I will briefly just mention branches. We can modify the working tree and we can create a new commit from, uh, if you if you, uh, if you add stuff here now, when you are sitting uh, and pointing no longer at the first, uh, the newest commit, you're no longer pointing to the newest commit. You, are go you have moved back and are pointing to something further back. But since um, that is not the newest, if you make changes to this now, then you are making the changes sort of inside of uh, the commit tree further back. So it would then split into uh, more than one branch. And uh, that is a good idea to do instead of just... Uh, it's better to split it in, in several branches if you want to do that, because maybe you end up actually wanting to keep the stuff you had already made. So uh, let's try and see what happens if we make changes actually to it as it looks now. Uh, I would like to show you what's inside this commands here. You can see this is the previous version before I added the stuff that I added at latest. So actually the file is now looking as it did one commit back. But what if I then add something now again? So let's do that. Let's try add something now again to our previous version, adding something here. And let's save it, yes. And then I will commit it. I will add it. That, and then I try to commit it. Committing my changes. And it will tell you detached head because you're trying to change a commit that is not uh, the newest one, but uh, it lets you, you can do that. Uh, so let's see what it says. And we should look at this one here. And you can say, see here that uh, it again show show how it looks and it shows it this is the newest commit that i just made which is no longer added to the new the newest commit it's added to a commit that was a bit further back in time 
but you can do that. You can go back and you can add to a previous uh, version of your file. And that is what we are doing right now. But it now has two branches because uh, it had the previous one, the one that actually uh, contained the newest update. Then you went back and you made a change to a previous uh, version. And that means that there are now two, new, two versions of the file in the tree. But uh, we are not working. We are only working on one of them. And uh, you could see here that this is uh, where we're pointing to, the head. It points to the very newest one you did. And uh, the branch originally, the master branch, it is pointing to the previous commit, the, the previous newest commit. So they both have this as one of their ancestors. But this one bypassed the previous newest commit. And that is a situation you will have quite regularly because you may find that uh, you didn't want to use what you had added yesterday or whatever, or today. And we can actually name this branch that we are currently now on. And we can do that with uh, the command git checkout minus B and give it. And now I will see if this actually worked for this version because that is a command that doesn't work for an older version of uh, git. Then you have to create the branch by itself. Okay, it actually is new enough to do that. So what you do is git checkout, which uh, is used to switch to a branch and you are at the same time creating the branch. So now we have a branch called second branch. And uh, we should take a look and see where is uh, our head now pointing. And the head is actually now pointing to the tip of second branch instead. And uh, we can also check which commit is there on that one. And I am just going to use, I, I will mark it and then I can uh, copy it with the mid mouse button, button in uh, Linux. So this is the hash it's pointing to this commit here and uh, we should uh, check what it says. And it is actually, as you can see, the new newest commit, which is the head of this second branch. But it is also possible to switch back to the other branch. And you can do that with git checkout master or main. So um, let's try and go back to our original primary branch. And uh, then let's see what uh, we have as head here. And you can see that the head here is actually pointing to the head of our current branch because we now have two branches. But what if we want the stuff that we had before uh, that we have now on, in the head commit of our original branch to be merged to the head, what to what is uh, to what the head is pointing at in uh, our new branch. That is possible. You can merge those two, and as you will see later in the week, when you merge something, you must stand on the branch that you are merging to. So we are now standing on master and we are trying to merge the new branch into it. Will that go well? Probably not because we have written in the same file in the same space, but uh, let's see it complain. 
And this uh, no if if ignore that for now, but it just means don't do not fast forward uh, magic. And as we expected, it failed. And uh, when it fails, it will create a file that con contains uh, conflicts. And in order to fix that, we would have to actually look at the uh, conflicting file. And the conflicting file is, of course, commands, because that was the one that we made the changes to. You can see here it's auto-merging the file commands. Uh, so let's try open this file. And uh, it will show you here how it looks. It's saying this is uh, how it looks, how the where the head is sitting on uh, the master, the one that you're on, and this is uh, where the head is uh, on uh, the second branch. So it tells you you cannot have both. You cannot have this text here in uh, the same spot as this text here. So you have to choose. And in this situation, the only thing you can do is fix it yourself. In many cases, Git can fix it for you. But in this case, you have to do it yourself. So what I would do is I would remove these. You have to remove those things here that tells uh, Git that there was a conflict. And then uh, you keep what it is you want to keep. And I, in this case, decides I simply want to keep everything. So I'm doing that. Yes. And then I say, OK, Git, I have fixed it. I am now going to let you continue the merge. And uh, it says uh, you cannot because you have unmerged files. And the reason for that is that I neglected to do a add before. So I'm doing that. And then I can continue. And now you can see it opens uh, my, bra my uh, editor. And I will just keep this uh, message that I'm merging to branch, second branch. I don't feel there is a need to write anything further into this uh, commit message. So I will just save it like that. And now Git happily merged them because now I had fixed it and I had added it and uh, it's happy. And let's see what it It's now pointing here. And let's do a git status. We are on branch master. Nothing to commit. The working tree is clean. And we could say git branch. And we are told we are sitting on the branch master. There is still the branch second branch because it still exists. We created it. But everything that is inside of it has now been merged into the our current primary branch. So we are happy. There is no unsaved uh, information, no unsaved commits. We have fixed all conflicts. And uh, we can look at the commit, which uh, we have here. So let's try to do that. And you can see it has two parents because it both has the file that was the newest commit on the master branch and then one that was the newest commit on the second branch. And it uh, thus uh, has both of those as parent. And this is the message that we added to the commit message. So this is how the tree would look. So what happens if uh, we move back to a previous commit, like we just did? So let's do git log. The command git log shows uh, at least the newest uh, uh, commits you have. And it is listed with 
the the oldest one at the bottom and the newest at the top. So you could again do git checkout and say now I simply want to see my very first commit. So I will check out this. And again, I am in detached head, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because I am looking in a place. My I have placed head in a different place than what is the tip of the primary branch. And uh, it gives you these informations there where you can create new branches and such, just as we did before. But we're not interested in doing anything here right now. We just want to see how did our file look at this point. And uh, we can also see what's in the directory. And this was the very early beginning of uh, when we work on this repository. There's nothing in it except for file.txt. And that is as we expected because we went back to the first commit. So this is how the state was of our working tree, of our Git repository at this point. So it looks like we had expected it to. And you can use that to just go back and see how did it look in the beginning? Uh, was there anything I could have done different at this point? Should I actually create a branch from the very beginning? And so on and so forth. Uh, and you could try and play around with these things if you want to. And I think that uh, it might be a good idea to take a few minutes and just try out these things, try and move back and forth inside of uh, your commit tree and see how, uh, how it looks at different points in it. And uh, when you have done that, we will take a short break and then Diana will continue talking about uh, the commit tree. So, uh, so take a, take a few minutes and uh, try make several commits and then move back and forth in it and see, see how it behaves and yeah. <laughs> 